Well, in 2020, we don't see a lot of signs uh, for a substantial rebound. Uh, we would expect that we would see more or less the same outlook as 2019. However, it could get worse. Uh, if Brexit isn't coming to a deal soon, uh, that could uh, cause serious issues. Also, the US-China uh, trade war um, is, uh, is deteriorating uh, day after day. And also the recession seems to be around the corner. If those three things would come together, we could see a very poor 2020. Um, that being said, also the underlying economics uh, coming from private equity and uh, the corporates, which provide a very good alternative for IPOs, which very nice valuations is still there. Private equity has a lot of dry powder and they are still uh, raising capital as hell. So we would expect uh, very nice valuations as a good alternative uh, for an IPO exit uh, still be there. And then finally, we've seen that some of the stock which came to the market recently has been uh, underperforming in the aftermarket. And that obviously puts some cold water on the investor appetite uh, to subscribe to new IPOs. Well, if we look at the regional differences, uh, there's quite a very different picture to be painted there. The North American activity was booming. We had a 60% increase in activity in North America, not so much in number of deals, but very much in the value. A couple of very big IPOs came to the market like Uber, Lyft, and, and potentially still uh, uh, WeWork. Um, However, the aftermarket has been, been a bit underwhelming as a result of which some new IPOs seem to be in some kind of trouble as the investor appetite has uh, uh, calmed down a bit. Going forward for 2020, uh, we would expect uh, the US economy to still be doing quite well, although we've seen that sort of the long-awaiting IPOs have now come to the market and the question is how deep the pipeline is for new IPOs. Uh, Europe has seen a substantial drop in IPO activity, we're down probably 50% or so. Uh, sure, the uh, Brexit, uh, which doesn't seem to be able to come to a conclusion, has uh, substantially damped the activity in the UK, but also on the continent we've seen less activity than what was expected. However, we see some signs in certain specific industries. Biotech, for instance, has been doing quite fine, as well as uh, general tech uh, with a couple of very nice uh, deals out of Italy uh, from a market where we haven't seen a long, strong IPO activity for a while. If we then move to Asia, uh, Hong Kong uh, has been uh, touched quite severely by the, by the turmoil we see uh, in Hong Kong. However, um, there are a couple of signs of um, interesting opportunities there as well. The, the Shanghai London Connect, for instance, gives opportunities for cross-border deals out of China into London. And also Singapore, the Singapore market has been able to attract a couple of uh, very high profile REITs, uh, which obviously scores up the numbers as far as uh, Asia is concerned. If we then go to the Middle East, in the Middle East, uh, obviously the, 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 the hotspot is uh, Saudi Arabia for a long time now with a lot of domestic uh, capital market activity. And for sure, everyone is looking for the uh, uh, IPO of Aramco, which is rumored to be above 100 billion. That would be obviously a very nice thing for next year as far as the values are concerned, but it would be a one-off. And from that perspective, it could um, statistically distort a bit uh, the numbers we might see in 2020.